Is silver the secret weapon in modern wound care? Well, it's not just modern wound care. Silver has been used since Greek, Roman, and Egyptian times for a sterilization agent and to prevent infection. Today, I'm gonna to take you through how silver works, why we use it in wound care, and the different dressings that you can use for different wound problems. All right, let's get into it. All about silver today at Citizen Surgeon. Let's go. Welcome back to Citizen Surgeon. My name is Dr. Eric Pearson, and today we're gonna to continue the wound care discussion. Now, many of you have asked, what about silver? How is silver involved in wound care? Well, silver has a long history, and it's not just in these fancy modern dressings. Silver has been used as an antimicrobial since ancient times. Greek and Roman civilizations used to line their pots with silver to prevent bacterial contamination. Egyptian civilizations would use silver powders to prevent wound infection. And since that time, especially in the pre-antibiotic era, silver was extremely important not only to prevent infection, but to treat them. One story that comes up is from the Civil War in the Battle of Antietam. So this was the bloodiest day in American history, 23,000 dead on the battlefield. Now, Dr. Jonathan Letterman, who was the medical director for the U.S. Army at the Potomac, he was known as the father of battlefield medicine. And so when we had a mortar or a shell take off a soldier's leg and they had a compound fracture, open bone exposed, he knew that he had to do a uh, amputation to save that soldier's life. Well, he would do an amputation above the injury, and then he would apply silver nitrate, also known as lunar caustic, and that was applied to the wound to not only seal bleeding from small capillaries after the larger vessels were ligated, but also to prevent future infection. And uh, gangrene was a major cause of death on the battlefield. That wound would then be soaked in a silver compound to prevent infection and save that soldier's life. So silver has been used for centuries. Well, what are some other applications? Well, for infected wounds, abscesses, I said silver nitrate was used to prevent bacterial contamination and treat it. Also in burns, so silver sulfadiazine cream, okay, so that was used for burn treatment to prevent infection, especially for full thickness burn wounds. In newborns in the late 1800s, Creed's prophylaxis was silver eye drops that were placed in the eyes of newborns to prevent ophthalmia neonatorum, which was a severe neonatal eye infection caused by gonorrhea, and this dramatically improved neonatal blindness. Now, that was in 1881. So, where have we come since then, and how does silver work anyway? Well, if we looked at the basically the four main benefits of silver in wound healing was one, it had broad antimicrobial activity. So gram negative bacteria, gram positive bacteria, silver worked really well. It was easily accessible and easy to apply. So hospitals were using it and battlefield medicine, of course. Third, it had a cauterization effect, so it would stop bleeding from small capillaries. And fourth, it was a great treatment for proud flesh or granulation tissue that we see in chronic wounds. Well, how about the science? So if we get past that surface level stuff and we say, well, how, what does silver actually do to the bacteria? Well, it does these things. Silver is toxic to bacteria, viruses, and some fungi. It disrupts the bacterial cell membrane and that leads to cell death. It also binds to bacterial DNA and proteins and that limits their ability to replicate. And in addition, silver generates reactive oxygen species which further destroy the cell wall and lead to bacterial virus or some fungi death. So that is the mechanism of action of silver and how it prevents bacterial, viral, or fungal contamination. When we look at wounds, one of the most important aspects of silver, and we're going to talk about that in the dressings today, is that it 
defeats or attacks biofilms. Now, in some of the previous wound care videos, we talked a lot about biofilms, and they have this polysaccharide matrix, which makes them permeable or resistant to our immune system, all right? And so, silver as a topical applicant can attack these biofilms and reduce that bacterial load. And so when we look at the advantages of using silver, we can see that it has broad antimicrobial action. It reduces biofilm uh, development and that can lead to an improved wound environment for healing. And there is a low resistance development with silver compared to antibiotics. Well, what are some of the concerns? Well, first is cytotoxicity. So silver at higher concentrations can be cytotoxic to fibroblasts. So fibroblasts are laying down collagen for wound repair and also toxic to keratinocytes, which are in that healing wound bed. Silver dressings are more expensive than uh, non-silver dressings. And then of course, even though it is rare, there is some resistance, especially with repeated application for bacteria. So now let's get into the different dressings. So I'm going to give you three different dressings that are available for different wounds, how they work, and what the indications are and the contraindications of each of these dressings. So we're going to go through a foam dressing, a alginate dressing, and then finally a collagen dressing, all with silver. So let's get to the foam dressings. So foam dressings combine the absorptive capacity of foam to manage wounds that have high exudate with the antimicrobial properties of silver to dramatically improve wound healing in these difficult wounds or wounds that are infected or at a high risk of infection. So what are these dressings made of? Well, first is a polyurethane foam layer and that absorbs exudate and moisture from the wound and prevents that wound and the surrounding skin from becoming macerated. Second is a silver lined layer. Now, when the foam is absorbing moisture, it then releases silver into the wound. This provides sustained antimicrobial action and the silver, as we talked about, can disrupt the cell wall of bacteria, viruses, and some fungi. Now, some of these foam dressings have a third protective layer and that allows gas exchange, but provides protection from the external environment. Now, the benefits of these silver foam dressings is they keep the wound with an appropriate moisture, so they absorb excess exudate. That is naturally going to debris necrotic tissue from the wound by keeping it hydrated. Second, as we discussed, as that foam absorbs exudate from the wound, silver ions are going to be activated and released. That is going to lead to bacterial control in the wound and prevention of biofilm development, which is critical in these complex chronic healing wounds. And the third benefit is odor reduction. So by neutralizing the byproducts of bacteria, these foam silver dressings are going to really neutralize any wound order, especially in these chronic infected wounds. What are the contraindications of using a silver foam dressing? Well, one is in a dry wound. So if we don't have an exudate, we're not going to be able to release and activate those silver ions and the dressing won't do its function. Well, what types of wounds are ideal for silver foam dressings? Well, one is diabetic foot ulcers, venous leg ulcers that can be quite large and chronically infected. Partial thickness burns can have a significant amount of exudate and foam dressings may be excellent there. Also in post-surgical wounds, so if we have a surgical site infection that's opened up and we have a large wound, a foam dressing is going to help manage that exudate. And then post-traumatic wounds, lacerations that could not be closed, degloving injuries, abrasions, these are all indications for using a silver foam dressing. When would you not want to use a silver foam dressing? Well, first, if you had a non-exudative wound, if we're not going to get that moisture release from the wound, the foam will not absorb it, the silver ions will not be activated, and the dressing will really not be of much use. Second, you don't want to use it in somebody that has an allergy to silver. Third is, if we're going to have a chronic wound longer than a month, the silver can slow fibroblast 
uh, development and the lay down of collagen can actually delay wound healing. And then finally, if we have a wound that requires enzymatic debridement, then silver can slow wound healing enzymes. So those are the indications and contraindications for using a silver dressing. Now, what are some of the dressings available? You could check out Meplex AG, okay? You could also check out Aquacel AG or Biotin AG, which are all silver foam dressings that are good for heavily exudating wounds like we talked about. All right, let's get into the next type of dressing and that's gonna be the silver alginates. Well, what is a silver alginate? Silver alginate dressings combine the powerful antimicrobial properties of silver with the highly absorbable properties of alginate, which is a natural polysaccharide derived from seaweed to help with wound healing. These dressings are used for moderate to heavy exudating wounds that are at a high risk of infection, and they're composed of a few layers. So first is the alginate layer. So the alginate layer is composed of calcium alginate fibers, and when these get in contact with moisture, they create a soft gel. And that soft gel, it helps keep a moist wound environment, which promotes natural autolytic debridement by keeping that necrotic tissue hydrated. And finally, by forming that gel, it kind of conforms to all the cavities and indulations of the wound to get proper coverage of the entire wound bed. Like in the foam dressings, the silver ions are embedded into the alginate. And so when the alginate is in contact with moisture, the silver ions are released and then they have their antimicrobial action in the wound bed. So we're going to prevent bacterial infection. We're going to prevent bacterial replication and new bacterial growth. We are going to prevent the formation of biofilms and any biofilms that are present. The silver is going to penetrate through those and clear up that wound bed. And then finally, by forming that gel, we're going to keep necrotic tissue soft so the body can break it down naturally. And that prevents us having to do harsh or traumatic debridement to the wound bed. So what are the indications for using a silver alginate dressing? So moderate to heavy exudating wound, something like a diabetic foot ulcer, also a venous leg ulcer, a type three, type four pressure ulcer, also wounds with slough that need autolytic debridement, post-traumatic wounds, post-surgical wounds, such as in a surgical site infection that's been opened up, these are all indications for using the silver alginate dressing. What are the contraindications? So if we have a wound with low to no exudate, we don't wanna use silver alginates, that gel is not gonna form. If we're gonna be using these in a wound that's longer than two to four weeks, we might have some prevention of fibroblasts like in the silver foam dressings. Again, we don't wanna use it in somebody with a silver allergy. And these dressings in particular are not useful in full thickness burns or third degree burns. Because of that full thickness injury, the dressing is not appropriate for those wounds as it only is functioning on that very superficial level. How would we apply either a foam or an alginate dressing? Well, we'd want to cleanse the wound. You do that with normal saline. Apply the dressing, then secure that dressing with a secondary dressing. The secondary dressing could be a uh, gauze or even a coban with an ace wrap. Uh, and then finally, you want to change that and usually every one to three days, depending on the amount of exudate. So that is the silver alginate dressing, much like the foam dressing uh, and can be used in those moderate to highly exudative wounds. So let's get to this third type. This third type of silver dressing are the silver collagen dressings. So these function a little bit differently. So let's dive into it. So silver collagen dressings combine, again, that antimicrobial aspect of silver with the regenerative properties of collagen to facilitate improved wound healing. So by managing that wound's bio burden with the silver, these collagen scaffold dressings can facilitate tissue growth and promote healing. So these dressings are composed of a collagen scaffold so that 
promote cell migration and tissue growth, and that is impregnated with silver ions. So when the dressing comes into contact with moisture, again, those silver ions are released to have their antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral properties. Now, what are the indications for the collagen dressing? Now, collagen dressings don't have the same absorptive capacity of the foam dressings or the alginate dressings. They are better for low exudating wounds that have a higher risk of infection or delayed wound healing. So these can be excellent in low exudative pressure wounds, diabetic ulcers, venous ulcers, also post-traumatic injuries that have low exudate and post-surgical wounds. Also good for graft sites. So if we're doing a split thickness skin graft, both the donor site and over the recipient site. And finally, silver collagen dressings can promote healing in first and second degree burns or partial thickness burns. When should these not be used? So again, low to no exudate in the wound, it's not gonna activate the dressing. You're not gonna get any benefit there. If they're third degree burns, we don't wanna be using these collagen scaffolds. We need to certainly be at a burn center and get proper debridement. Then finally, anybody that has a sensitivity to animal derived collagen or a sensitivity to silver should not be using in these dressings. All right, so today we talked about silver and not that it's just a modern dressing, but the fact that it's been used for centuries. We've been using it Greek, Roman, Egyptian times, and then in the Civil War and then the pre-antibiotic era using silver nitrate, silver dressings to prevent infection on the battlefield. We then use silver sulfadiazine cream for full thickness burn injuries. And then in the modern area, we now have these very advanced wound care products like silver foam dressings, silver alginates, and then silver collagen dressings, which can help us manage moderate to heavy exudating wounds or low exudating wounds like in the silver collagens and use that collagen scaffold to promote cell migration, tissue growth, and enhance healing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that today. If you did, give it a like, give it a share, sign up for the channel, join us in the community here, and leave a comment. I love interacting with you guys. If you want to check out two videos which will really improve your knowledge when it comes to wound care, check out Wound Healing 101 and check out How Do Dressings Work, where I take you through all the dressings. All right. Until next time, stay safe, study hard, see you then.